I am Dr. Rohit Goel, practicing in Sector 7, Faridabad Living Well Health Clinic. Today, I will be speaking about latest update in hypertension. As per WHO, the 63% of total deaths in India are due to non-communicable disease, of which 27% are attributed to CVD, which affects 45% people in the 40 to 69 age group. Raised blood pressure is among the most important risk factors for CVDs. In India, prevalence has also gone up over 30 to 38 percent in men and 32 percent in women from 29 percent and 28 percent respectively. Despite nearly half of the people or 51 percent of men and 41 percent of women with hypertension were unaware of the condition. International Society of Hypertension has released the ISH 2020 Global Hypertension Practice Guidelines, the inclusion of optimal and essential treatment paradigms attempts to address the issue that in resource poor settings. Optimal care refers to evidence-based standard of care and whereas essential standard refers to minimum standards of care to allow specification of essential standards of care for low resource settings. The AHA and ACC has released a scientific statement in 2021 offering new guidelines for management of stage one hypertension among patients with low ASCVD risk. Among low-risk adults with stage 1 hypertension, management starts with non-pharmacologic therapy. If blood pressure remains uncontrolled at 3 to 6 months, consider starting pharmacologic therapy. Acute respiratory distress syndrome is a potential fatal condition involving lung damage and experts often associate it with severe COVID-19. A recent study which appears in the Journal of American College of Cardiology reports that metoprolol can reduce lung inflammation and improve respiratory function in people with COVID-19 induced ARDS. Lowering systolic blood pressure targets down to the 110 to less than 130 mmHg range substantially reduced CV advanced events in the step randomized trial, affirming that sprint findings for an older Chinese population. Among some 8,500 patients aged 60 to 80 in China, the uh, intensive target trimmed 26% of the composite CV risk. Findings from now, a second major trial supporting a lower target could unite the guidelines, which even the among US professional societies range from thresholds of 130 to 150 millimeter of mercury. With regard to prognostic value of ambulatory blood pressure monitoring and nighttime blood pressure, the 2018 European guidelines on the management of arterial hypertension recommended the diagnosis of hypertension should not only be dependent on office BP measurements, but also on out of office measurements, such as ABPM or home blood pressure monitoring. 24 hour and nighttime BP measurements were associated with greater risk of mortality and a composite of CV outcome. Thus, they may be considered as the most relevant measurements for estimating CV risk. For every 20 or 10 mm uh, mercury increment of BP measured at night, the risk of mortality increased by 23% and the risk of cardiovascular events by 36%. Most patients with hypertension require lifelong medical therapy to achieve optimal BP control. 2018 European guidelines equally recommend five classes of antihypertensive drug. Considering high non-adherence treatment, the importance of combination treatment is particularly highlighted to improve adherence to therapy and BP control. Therefore, the 2018 European guidelines recommend, especially in context of lower BP targets, to start antihypertensive therapy with an initial dual fixed dose combinations of AC inhibitors or ARBs plus calcium channel blockers or diuretics. Since early July 2018, products containing Valsartan have been recalled worldwide. The reason is the detection of known carcinogen, namely NDMA, which can be found in candisartan, erbisartan, losartan, olmisartan, and valsartan. NDMA has been classified by WHO, International Agency for Research on Cancer, to be carcinogenic in humans. If 1 lakh patients would have received NDMA contaminated valsartan every day for 6 years, in the highest dose, it could result in 22 additional liver cancers over the lifetime of these patients. The presence of NDMA in these drugs could lead to eight additional cancer cases in one lakh patients if they had taken the highest daily dose over four years. 
were certain recall accompanied by a significant increase in the rate of emergency department visits of 6%. The IGS study represents the largest study that tested nighttime antihypertensive treatment in this trial chronotherapy was associated with a significant reduction in endpoints. The Hygia chronotherapy trial tested whether nighttime therapy in comparison to usual upon wake awakening hypertension therapy exerts a comfort comfortable CV risk reduction. The larger study in included a total population of 19,000 hypertensive patients during an average follow-up of 6.3 years, 1,752 participants experienced the primary CV outcome. An ambulatory BP measurement was performed for 48 hours to collect data on low BP deferred during sleep. The RR reduction for CV events was significantly improved for nighttime treatment when compared with awakening treatment. Thank you.